we're very much involved in uh, Indianapolis and the area in all the directions. You can see the work and the community that we've built over time. I mean, we're Crossroads of America for a reason. I am a project manager for Reith Riley Construction Company in Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, I am currently on the I-69 uh, Section 6.4 contract. For people traveling either between Martinsville and Indianapolis or Bloomington in Indianapolis or anywhere south, it's connecting a big part of the state of Indiana that wasn't as accessible before I-69. The amount of commerce and material that travels through Indiana and originates from Indiana just really opens up that avenue to the southwest. Tennessee, Kentucky, anywhere southwest, Texas, I mean, it allows the peace of mind for people traveling on the interstate, for the, for the interstate truck traffic, for the travelers, for, for you name it, people that are utilizing the infrastructure to feel a bit of comfort, a bit of safety. That way they know they're not gonna have to stop or come upon something that they're not used to. One of the reasons why we are where we are on this project is the communication and the trust that we have as a contracting team and as a contractor INDOT team. Well, my name is Sarah Rubin. I am the Deputy Director of our Major Projects Division and then I also serve as the I-69 Finish Line Corridor Project Manager. I've been working on I-69 Finish Line since 2014 when we started the environmental document and I've essentially been responsible for shepherding the project through the process from environmental through design and now we're in construction. One of our primary goals is, is safety and mobility, right? Getting folks up the corridor faster. I believe once we're fully constructed, there's um, like an 11 or 12 minute time savings between Martinsville and Indianapolis. From a safety perspective though, um, from Martinsville to Indianapolis, before we started construction, there were over 90 connections along that route. So uh, local roads, private drives, farm drives, and all of that's been compressed down to 10 interchanges and 14 overpasses and underpasses. And so I think that speaks to the change in, in, in safety. I mean, we still have great functionality, but um, fewer at-grade crossings is safer for those at the at-grade crossings and also for those on the main line. You don't have to worry about somebody going by you at 70 miles an hour when you're trying to turn into your driveway. You're either connected to a new local road, a frontage road. If you have children or dogs or any kind of animals, it, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind that, that you're no longer right up against the, that interstate or the, the state highway. The team's dedication to, to delivering the project, uh, they're great communicators, they're very responsive. Um, they do what they say they're going to do. Communication is one of the biggest aspects, communication and trust. They want a project done just as much as we want a project done. We all want it to, to be done right and we want it done on time. I consider all of us one team, whether it's the INDOT staff or the contractor staff, um, and that extends the corridor, you know, from down from contracts one all the way up to contract five. Working closely with INDOT, working closely with our other contractors, uh, everyone understanding their role. I like to use the analogy of of a cake, a multi-layered cake, right? It's gonna be really sweet when it's all finished and, and we can drive it and everything is open, but there are a lot of layers to it as well. You know, we had the environmental layer, understanding how people are gonna use it, the commitments. Um, we had, you know, the design layer, of making sure that those elements come to fruition in something that's constructible. We had to move uh, utilities. Um, I think utilities alone, we moved $156 million worth of utility, so not a small undertaking. You know, our goal for completing construction was 2027, and the governor's next level roads program um, infused money into the corridor and accelerated the project by three years. And so for those of us that are living and breathing it and have been for some time, and obviously the contractors that have come on board in the last couple of years, um, you know, everybody's working really hard to get to that new 2024 date for us to be completely open to traffic. So um, it's, it's an exciting time to be building that cake.